Welcome to this, the Packet Pushers live stream with Glueware. As you uh, might know, Glueware is a low-code intelligent network automation product. And there's lots of things about this product that tempt me. And they've been with the Packet Pushers for a number of years, and we've been seeing them evolve and adapt over time. It's been a really interesting journey. And today we're going to be talking about what they do now and how they've evolved from an intent-based model driven to an intelligent network automation technology as we mature in the market. Let me tell you about the event mechanics for those of you listening on the live stream. This session is a webinar style. That is, you listen to us talk, you watch us, but this is actually six 10-minute segments. So it's not 60 minutes of us droning on. You'll be able to ask questions in the chat window, but we won't be able to respond because of the way that we're staging. We don't see the questions, but we will have a Q&A section at the end. So the answers will be uh, come back to you. Some of the questions will be answered in the chat as we go, but the rest will be answered later on. Uh, provide your email in the chat if you have an urgent question and we'll be able to get somebody to get back to you, either from Glueware or from Packet Pushers to help you out. Uh, if you have to drop or you have to go because you need a cup of coffee desperately or you've got an urgent call or whatever, or the network goes down, that's fine. Go away. But remember that these videos will be available on YouTube in the next week or two. They'll be rolling out so you won't be able to, to miss anything. Uh, special guest thanks to our guests today. We have customers real customers on the show. Uh, Terry Slattery, which is a name that many of you will be familiar with, but also Krista Paola and Angelo Rossi, who are actually people using Glueware, and they'll be talking about how they use it in their networks. Okay, so with that complete, let's start today's live stream. There are two key elements that we'll discuss in the next segment. So now let's bring in Michael Howe, VP of Marketing, to the screen and get into the demo. Hey, good morning, Greg. Great to see you. Great to be on the show. Yes. Now, this segment is going to be talking about how out-of-the-box network automation with Glueware works. And that is just how fast we can get time to value with the Glueware product. Because this is a key thing. I think a lot of us forget that there we have these existing networks and we can automate them. We don't have to make a gold field for vendors to mine in and sell you new stuff. We can actually get started with Glueware straight away. So let's get into showing people how that works. Yeah, absolutely. So let's let's just jump in. I mean, just to build off your point, you know, one of the key things Glueware is intending to do for prospects and, and customers that we deliver for customers is that out of the box capability, which is get to value. And I think that when you think about automation, everyone's kind of saying, well, we're doing automation or, you know, we have some NCCMs and, you know, I have a little script I wrote, but the overall effectiveness of automation is at a very low percent. And so when when you think about, well, how do you move the bar with automation or how do you really get to a point where you know you create change in your organization it usually comes with three ways one is an, a business impacting event right like an outage or or some critical thing goes down or you lose a key resource the person who knows how an nccm works or wrote a script or management sees value and understands the importance of automation to help enable all the things that you really need so you care about availability and security and performance well automation can help deliver those things so Let's cue the video number one here and let's take a look at a short demo that highlights uh, a, a few of the out of the box capabilities. And so what you're going to see here is that with Glueware, with starting a device manager, you can si simply drag and drop in your devices. We execute a device discovery and we do a deep interrogation of the device, onboarding and ingesting all the details about the platform, the operating system, the configuration, and it is ingests in and stores it wraps it all in data models and stores it in a, a database. So you have a real time snapshot of exactly what's running in your network and have visibility of all that. So this is straight up. You just turn on a VM and go. I can Apologize. Deploy yeah, this I have to talk over it while it runs quickly here, but sure, the sure, next sure, piece yeah. of it is, uh, you know, it's executing a network discovery. So in addition to discovering devices, you can actually crawl the network using an ARP table crawl and actually see what's connected to your device and identify those ones that you don't know about or that didn't have the proper credentials or there's some reachability issues. So executing a network discovery is really critical. And I apologize, Greg, I'll have to talk right over it and then we can That's discuss fine. after. Now that it's ingested all of it into the database, you can search, right? So you can, you can look at your data, you can start to analyze it, understand the operating systems running and even execute a search of all your configurations. So let's say you wanna know is BG, what device is BGP configured on? You can just execute a search. What this is showing here is the, the, the Cisco API integration where you can look at end of life, end of sale, P-cert, uh, that was showing a, a P-cert issued. This is showing that you have uh, all the configurations stored in the database. 
Here I'm searching for, if, is BGP configured? It shows me it is. Now I can do a deep, more detailed query, looking at operational state and saying, is BGP established on these devices? And so it's it's really just you know a lot out of the box that you're not coding. And then you layer in the dashboards, you can take all that data and visualize it. What is my device breakdown? What is my vendor breakdown? What vulnerabilities do I have? And just get that. And then the final piece of this short demo, Greg, I know it's yeah. a, kind of a quick one, is taking that data and building reports on it. So what is my de what is my detailed inventory? What uh, security reports do I want to report out? What is my current operational state or configuration on ports so I can look at and understand things that impact performance? So this video is only about two minutes. It's super quick, but you yep. get a highlight of what I would consider or what we advise is like the phase one of network automation, get to a known state. If you don't know what's in your network, you how can you automate it? Now, at this point, I haven't configured anything in the network. I've just read the network and I've loaded the model into the Glueware system. And you've just read all that dynamically from the network. And from that, you've told me configuration, you've backed up all the configurations, but you've also taken out um, deeper stuff like state, MAC addresses, ARP tables, That's right. routing tables, FIBs, as much data as you can take from the device, the, the, the system to populate the database. Yeah, to, to your your first point is that Glueware is pure software. You know, if you want to go on-prem, we, we deploy as uh, virtual machines into your infrastructure or we can run from the cloud or you can run a Glueware hosted cloud from AWS. So from a spin-up standpoint, very minimal impact. It's just software. Then okay. Glueware is doing all that interrogation like you just said. And then a, a number of things are all pre pre built or prepackaged of what is delivering, then it's extensible. So if you want to collect additional information, it is extensible. It can do that. So let's talk about the second section. So once you've got this data, the second thing that most people want to be able to do is config drift or configuration monitoring and audit. So let's cue that video and uh, let's talk over that. Yeah, I'll have to run over this one as well. So yeah. let's take a look at the video. So as Greg was saying, you would jump back into Glueware here and we'll move on into the next application with Glueware's a suite of apps that deliver out of the box functionality. This is drift and audit. So we're gonna take a look at the devices and Glueware takes a snapshot of all the configurations. Then either periodically scheduled or triggered by something like Syslog, you can look at and identify when something has changed. You can see exactly in this side by side here, you're saying this was the previous good config. Now it's in this state, something's been moved, added, changed. So this just really dramatically helps in minimizing troubleshooting or identifying when someone left an ACL off or you know, all the things that can impact you when people are in there finger defining their network, as uh, Greg likes to say. I like that uh, term. <laughs> well, it's a problem with finger defined networking that somebody goes in and configures something and then it's not then compliant yeah. with the standard or and, and maybe that leads you know. right into this, which is audit, which is yeah. now not not you're not just looking at what's changed, is you're saying this is a required statement, this is a forbidden statement. You can very easily build your own audits without coding. It's literally just CLI and regex. So you don't need to be a programmer. You don't have to go learn a language. You don't have to, and we have a numerous predefined audits like you know CIS and NIST and the DoD STIG, and you get a very detailed breakdown. And even in these first two steps of inventory, drift, and audit, there is an unbelievable number of issues people find that then they have to go solve yeah. before you're moving on to more complex automation. So in this next phase of it, it's kind of showing what is that next step, which is automating operating system upgrades, which is a painful process. Most of us on this call, you're gonna hear from customers today have been through it. Numerous failure points. If you brick a device, it's embarrassing. You probably got a truck roll or call somebody at the site. Not a fun experience. Glueware pre, uh, does all the pre-checks. The validation can automate the staging. We've helped companies go from like, you know, 10 or 12 upgrades in a maintenance window to several hundred devices upgrading in a maintenance window. So when you think about the impact of that and like the efficiency, right, time to value and what can I get done in a limited amount of time, automating something like an operating system upgrade is really critical and, and making it so that it's reliable. I think, Greg, as we've talked over the years, uh, the thing about automation that's scary or you have a bad memory is when it failed, right? When automation yeah. went wrong. And with Glueware, everything relying and built through an intelligent orchestration engine, it's highly reliable and you know understand exactly what's happening down at the CLI and on the device. So we talked about doing the configuration drift, watching the configurations and knowing it, and then being able to audit configuration changes. That's fairly standard. But I mean, we're only talking here, you're a couple of hours into the deployment of a Glueware 
system, yeah. right? And then in the next segments, we're going to go deeper into how it can evolve into something much bigger. So we wanted to start small and go big over the next series of videos. And I think the thing that you then showed was, so when it comes to configuration, um, and you really need to get a demo of this, or you need to talk to Glueware about this to believe this to be true, because I know it is because I've spoken to your customers, but um, you have actually done the hard work in integrating with vendors setups and technology to get a reliable upgrade. And that's even down to the older stuff of the TFTP and backing up configs and having rollbacks and all that sort of stuff, right? Exactly, Greg. And it really comes down to the technology stack. Like how is the automation being implemented? If it's a GUI on top of a script and, and you know, you're only, your automation is only as strong as the weakest point, really, when you think yeah. about it. And so Gluer is building the device adapters. We have the, the orchestration engine. We have common procedures and in, in systems that perform the pre-checks, the reads, the compares, and we deliver that intent-based type of experience where you're telling me, you're telling the, the system to go perform something and then it's automatically doing it for you. And yeah. because and you it didn't is have to go and invent, you know, yeah. you didn't have to go and invent Python scripts and Ansible and spend months testing it in a lab. This is all done. Uh, this work is done for you by Glueware. Well, yeah. in this segment, we've had a quick look at Glueware and how they can very quickly come onto your site and start to deliver value just from deploying something very quickly. And this really is just the start of what Glueware can deliver. Time to value is pretty quick. But in the next segment, we will demonstrate how Glueware evolves and grows right the way up to a higher scale solution. And we're going to be talking to customers about how they use Glueware as infrastructure as code and also in a CI CD pipeline. Speaking of which, the next segment is evolving from CLI to infrastructure as code. Ethan, why don't you take it away?